could you please explain in roughly 60 seconds why you're qualified to be the Undersecretary of the Air Force? Senator, I have a deep appreciation for our service members. Um, and though I have not worn the uniform myself, I have been on the same team with them since I was 22 years old. Um, and I have family members that have also served. If confirmed, I would work with officers and enlisted leaders to ensure that we're providing the best possible care and support for our airmen and guardians that they certainly deserve. Um, I also wanted to share just a very short story. Um, in 2010, when I was a career civil servant, I turned down an opportunity at the White House to serve on the National Security Council to deploy as a civilian advisor to Afghanistan um, because I believe that's where my country needed me the most at that time. And as a defense civilian, I thought it was important to understand what it was like to work in an operational command in wartime. In my over 20 years in defense, I have learned that civil military dialogue is vital to provide the best possible options and potential Ma solutions to the Frank, Secretary of Defense and the President. What, and in our I'm democracy, to, Senator, we are fortunate I'm trying to have to civilian is, oversight of the okay, military. Listen, I'm trying to give you as much leeway as possible for you to describe why you're qualified to be the Undersecretary of the Air Force. Understanding the duties, and I'll read it pretty plain here, the duties and responsibilities responsible for the affairs of the Air Force, Space Force, including organizing, training, equipping both services for the welfare of approximately 700,000 active duty guards, reserves, civilian and uh, personnel, oversees an annual budget of more than 173 billion in direct strategies, policy development, risk management, uh, purchasing of weapons, technology investment, and human resource management. I'm just looking for qualifications. Um, you didn't give me any qualifications. You gave me your history, your story. But what makes you qualified to be the Undersecretary of the Air Force? Uh, we're at a serious, critical time right now in this country. And we need the best and the brightest. And I'm sure you're great, and I'm sure you're extremely bright, but are you the best for to be the Undersecretary of the Air Force? I, I don't see it. I, I, and it, not that that's no stab at you. I'm just saying that at, at a time when we're 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 training we're trading over transitions from future war, uh, uh, fighters from aircraft from weapons systems. We're getting at transition out of the war of terror, going into conventional warfare. We're behind in a lot of systems that we're trying to get to. The Air Force plays a pivotal role in this. The National Guard is getting uh, divested of, of aircraft on a daily basis with nothing in, in reserve for them to be able to pick up. That's a direct reflect to our homeland. And the Undersecretary is gonna be involved in all this with decision making. And I'm, I'm having a very hard time to see your qualifications on this. This is why I gave you time to explain it and you go into a story about being on the same team and about, you know, you turned down a position to, to an, another political position to be able to run in and do, uh, to be, you know, um, uh, sent to Afghanistan, which I don't undermine that at all. I just don't see how that makes you qualified. That doesn't make you a bad person. I just don't think you're the best person for the job right now. And that's what we're looking for right now. We're trying to recruit the best and the brightest men and women to join our, our armed services to begin with. We need to know that they had the best and the brightest leading them too. And unfortunately, I don't, I don't feel like that's you.